This video is brought to you by the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today we have this enormous stone bridge from the WizKids 4D settings line. WizKids is really getting into the bigger is better mindset and this piece is pretty incredible. Many thanks to WizKids for sending it our way. We're gonna celebrate Bridge Day by doing another giveaway. To enter, all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave me a comment down below letting me know what other kind of content you'd like to see from us. I mean, we do reviews of minis and terrain, but what else would you like to see from us? If you win, you can get a booster box of City of Lost Omens pre-painted minis from the Pathfinder Battles line. There's some pretty great guards in here to keep your bridge safe. So let's go ahead and cross this bridge and take a closer look. Let's start with the bridge itself. It's modular and comes with two bridge ends, one bridge middle, one bridge riser for the middle, and two bridge risers for the ends. Each piece is quite heavy and substantial. The bridge ends and middle slot together using friction. There is no locking mechanism, but it stays together just fine. The bridge itself has a subtle grid and is four inches wide. You can put it together in a number of different ways depending on your particular needs. You can make the bridge both taller and longer. Maybe you just want a short bridge to cross a small stream. The short version of the bridge is 11 inches long. Or maybe the bridge needs to be raised up a little higher so boats or pedestrians can cross underneath. The risers raise the bridge up by about two and three quarters inches, enough to fit some minis underneath. Perhaps there are some trolls that lurk under there. But in our case, obviously, it's a snowy owlbear. His name is Barry Manisnow. Or maybe you want a longer bridge to cross a river or a ravine. You can insert the middle section of the bridge to extend it. The longer bridge is 16 inches long. You can add the end risers again, plus the middle riser, to make this longer bridge taller as well. 16 inches long with two places to hide underneath. Let's take a look at those stone end pillars now, plus the other accessories in the box, to see how we can further customize our bridge. You get four of those aforementioned stone end pillars, and six end pillar caps to go on top. There are two built-in pillars on the middle bridge insert for those two extra pillar caps. These pillars are primarily there to let you use the various chain accessories. You have three types of chains to choose from. The set contains two full chains, four hooks, and four broken chains. As you can see, you can take the tops off and put them back on again, and you can remove and rearrange all the accessories as you like between them. This T-shaped connector is used to attach the various included chains to the end pillars or to the end of the bridge itself. The accessories will fit on both depending on your setup. Note that you'll probably want to use the end pillars when you're using the end risers because otherwise you'll be leaving a fairly obvious square hole in those risers that won't look quite right. If you're not using the end riser, the bridge looks just fine with or without the pillars, giving you some aesthetic options. Now let's see how those chains look in practice. Your default option is having the empty hook on your pillars. It's all ready in case your guards need to quickly attach a chain in case of a lockdown or increased troll or Barry Manisnow activity. Or you can have the chains connected, effectively closing the bridge off, especially if your party has a wagon or horses they need to bring along with them. And finally, you've got the broken chain to use after it's been severed by your naughty rule-breaking adventuring party. The nice thing about the 4D settings line is that it's easily changeable on the fly. So you can set up a bridge encounter in which the party has to quickly take care of the chain during a fight to get across the bridge as quickly as possible. Or perhaps they have to get the chain set up to stop an oncoming siege weapon from crossing the bridge. So you can view these options as storytelling possibilities. Also, since the bridge comes in various pieces, you can have an encounter where the party has to destroy the bridge. Let's take a look at a few of the other accessories included in the box. You also get two piles of rubble, one troll warning sign, one toll warning sign, and four wooden blockades, also called cheval de frise. Unfortunately, no Barry Manus no warning signs, but every set has room for improvement. You also get some charming spikes, Two will have a wolf's head impaled on them, perfect for your wolf head jamboree celebrations in Velaki during your Curse of Strahd adventures. And two will have a humanoid skull, always appropriate. The heads are removable from the spikes. You also get four of the spike terrain bases to put them on. 
You also get a male and female guard mini, just doing their jobs, and two freestanding guard huts. And again, if you're wanting to fill out your City Guard mini collection, I recommend checking out the City of Lost Omen set of minis that released recently. You can see our review of it by clicking the eye in the corner of your screen. I solicited questions from Facebook and Instagram while putting this video together, so let me address some of those now while you see the bridge in action on the table here. Trevor asked how much weight the bridge will support. It'll easily support the weight of any mini that'll fit on it, not something you really need to worry about. It's definitely a sturdy, strong bridge. Renee wanted to know about its size. So you can fit probably eight to 10 regular medium-sized minis underneath the short bridge, and about twice that number under the long bridge. It'll also fit some larger minis, like most of your trolls, and of course, Barry Manisnow here. It'll fit a couple of those. There is a slope going down the side of the bridge that makes it somewhat difficult for minis to stay put on certain squares. For bridge encounters, you might want to consider having a little bit of tack handy to keep your mini from slip sliding down the bridge. Matthew asked how it lined up with Warlock tiles. Well, currently we don't have any Warlock tiles that are specifically designed for an outdoor setting, so I don't have anything to show you there. But let's take a look at how it looks with an indoor dungeon tiles terrain system. As you can see here, it fits together pretty well with the colors. I'll be curious to see how it looks when we get the Warlock Tile Town Square set early next year. But as you can see, our town and village tiles and the summoning circle on some of our builds here all looks pretty good to me. Jim asked why it wasn't on his table now. Well, sir, pre-orders are up, so if you want to order it, go ahead. The bridge is amazing and such a great addition to my gaming table. Using that combination of warlock tile buildings and dwarven forge forest terrain, the WizKids bridge, all on our large battle systems grassy map, man, I thought that was one of the coolest setups I've ever done on my table. As we get more types of terrain to show you here on the Gallant Goblin, we'll show you how the bridge works with them in our future videos, so stay tuned. The bridge is one of the more expensive sets out there, as you might imagine. It has an MSRP of $149.99, though I'm seeing some pre-order discounts that bring it down as low as $129.99, so do some shopping around. It's scheduled to hit stores in September 2020. Don't forget to enter our giveaway to win a booster box of City of Lost Omens minis. Just be a subscriber and leave me a comment down below telling me what kind of content you'd like to see from us besides mini and terrain reviews. I posted a pic over on our Instagram a couple weeks ago showing you some of the preview and review copies that we have to show you guys that we're working on right now. So you can go over there and check that out. We have a lot out there and that's a couple of things we haven't shown you at all yet. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also, your subscriptions really help us reach new viewers. All those likes and subscriptions and even clicking the little bell icon to get notifications, all that helps us improve our reach on YouTube so we can bring you more fun videos and other content. We have a few other ideas for new content to share with you in the coming weeks, but I also want to hear from you what you're interested in. Come chat with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and share your ideas. We want to thank our sponsor for this video, the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series, which is a monthly zine introducing you to new boss monsters for your 5th edition D&D games. Each booklet contains backstory, stat blocks, layer information, new monsters and items, and sometimes even whole new mechanics. There are always a variety of story hooks as well, so you can find a way to bring your existing adventuring party into all the fun. This month, come meet Zelethestrina, a beautiful and dangerous succubus trapped in a crumbling wizard's tower. Will you get lured into her deadly embrace? Learn more and subscribe today at BigBadBooklet.com. Thank you for watching today. Please keep staying safe out there. Have fun, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.